Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we're going to discuss when and where we could see Tropical Storm Sarah form and the weakening of Raphael over time. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to TropicalTibbets.com for Thursday, November 7th, 2024. The black arrow is Hurricane Raphael, no longer a Category 3 hurricane, but still strong uh, with winds of 110 miles per hour, so a very strong Category 2. But from this point out, will start to weaken as it starts to feel the effects of the higher wind shear in the Gulf of Mexico. Then we have Disturbance 1 in purple, and we have a tropical wave about to come through Trinidad and Tobago and Barbados and the rest of the Caribbean islands in pink. Here's the vorticity map, which shows the spin and energy in the atmosphere associated with our tropical entities that we are tracking. And it's the one near Puerto Rico that has the immediate threat of potentially developing into Tropical Storm Sarah. Here is Disturbance One's close up view on the satellite image. Nothing organizing per se right now, but National Hurricane Center does have a 20% chance of developing over the next two and seven days as this continues to drift westward north of the Caribbean islands towards Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas. Here's our close-up view of Hurricane Raphael. As you can see, its eye is starting to close as we're getting into the nighttime hours and eventually this is going to leave the loop current, which it's over right now, and uh, eventually, with those cooler waters and the high wind shear, will start to weaken as it continues its westward journey very slowly. In terms of where the storm's going to go, some of the models still have this uh, stalling out and just meandering in the Gulf of Mexico. But the official forecast from National Hurricane Center right now uh, has it moving west and then eventually southwest towards the southern southwest portions of the Gulf of Mexico and the Bay of Campeche, Gulf Coast of Mexico. And that's based on the spaghetti track guidance models showing where this storm could go. So it's at its peak right now, Category 2. Maybe one last burst into Category 3 is a possibility while over the loop current, and then we'll slowly, uh, gradually decrease in strength with cooler temperatures and higher wind shear. While the outer bands will continue to bring some locally heavy rainfall to the Yucatan Peninsula and western Cuba, so anywhere between 2 to 4 inches or 50 to 100 millimeters of precipitation is expected. Here's the key messages regarding Raphael. You can pause this to take a chance to read it. On the left is in English and on the right is in Spanish. So let's look where we can see the next potential storm to form. We're going to track Disturbance 1 in purple and our tropical wave in pink. And black, of course, is Raphael, but we're using the GFS 850 millibar cyclonic vorticity. Again, this is the spin and energy in the atmosphere, about 5,000 feet up from the surface of the ocean. Upper level environment shows an upper level ridge over our black hexagon, which allowed Raphael to rapidly intensify yesterday into a Category 3 hurricane. And then just to the left of that, you see those dark yellows, reds, and purples. That's the subtropical jet that's going to shear it apart. As you can see here on our wind shear map, all that red is going to rip the storm apart as it continues moving westward. Light wind shear environment right now for Disturbance 2. That's going to slowly... Uh, fade away as it gets into the outflow of uh, Raphael, as you can see, in between Raphael and Disturbance 1. So that's a high wind shear environment that's going to be moving into. And then we have our pink tropical wave, which is in some wind shear at the moment as well. So that's why we're not seeing any development from it. And then we have the dry air that's going to infiltrate Raphael, as you can see here in the browns moving as it goes towards the western Gulf of Mexico. So two days from now on Saturday, November 9th, 
We have Rafael moving into the western Gulf of Mexico, pretty much to a crawl at this point. The disturbance one hasn't formed, at least on this model run, as it moves through the Turks and Caicos and eastern Cuba. And we have our slow-moving pink tropical wave entering the eastern portions of the Gulf of Mexico. And it's moving slowly because we have very weak trade winds with a very weakened Bermuda Azores high out here. You got the Bermuda high really over the eastern half of the United States. And then the Azores is all the way back towards to the east of the Azores Islands between the Azores and the Iberian Peninsula. So you got this big trough in the middle. So if we had a huge major hurricane right now, it would go whoop right up the middle of that in the weakness in the high pressure. But because this tropical wave isn't very tall in the atmosphere, it's not feeling those effects, it's just going to drift ever so slowly westward across the main development region into the Caribbean. Upper level environment, as you can see, still have that ridge over uh, Raphael, but it's slowly decreasing in strength. We have an upper level trough over the um, Western Caribbean, which is keeping Disturbance 1 from developing at the moment. But we'll see that change by the time we get to five to seven days from now. And I'll show you that in just a bit. So that upper level trough creates that wind shear, creating the unstable environment why Disturbance 1 is not developing on the model. And then, of course, it's also ingesting some dry air as well, as well as Raphael. So five days from now, on Tuesday, November 12th, we see, at least on this model run, Raphael just meanders in the northern, just off the coast, the Gulf Coast of the United States. Uh, it's not showing what the uh, National Hurricane Center forecast is, where it's going to be going southwest. That's on the European model. I'll show you in a little bit. Uh, but we see our pink tropical wave is trying to interact with our Central American gyra to concentrate some vorticity. As you can see, it's going to have a light wind shear environment as we're going to have an upper level ridge starting to develop over the storm. That's going to force out that upper level trough that's now going to be near the western tip of Cuba. And the low wind shear environment, upper level trough and a ton of moisture associated with this potentially could start our next cycle for our next storm where we've seen Raphael form and all of the others this past hurricane season so that's why the caption on the, the title of the video on the title card was again in question marks with an exclamation point after that because I think as I've seen in people's comments they're getting tired of it they don't want another storm they want the season to be over with and I don't blame them so here we are, a week from now. G this could just be GFS convection bias, but we have a uh, developing tropical storm potentially just south of Jamaica, like we saw with Raphael just a few days ago. Upper level ridge over the storm, light wind shear environment, ton of moisture to work with, and we'll see if this comes true or not. Here's the European model, just for comparison. You can see that the Disturbance 1 really doesn't get together. Raphael weakens and then eventually slowly drifts towards the southwest, towards Gulf, uh, Mexico as it weakens. And so we'll, and then very end of that, you see not as robustly, but you do see some vorticity tightening in the Southern Caribbean where our tropical wave interacts with the Central American gyra. And maybe we see something form there. So here's the ensemble models showing where our disturbances and hurricanes are going to be going over the next seven days. Of course, black is the track of Raphael, purple is disturbance one, and pink is where our next tropical wave could develop, which is right now outside of the Caribbean near Trinidad and Tobago. So we'll continue to track Raphael, see if it brings any impacts to the Mexican coastline or if it's just going to meander and die out in the Gulf. Disturbance 1, as it tracks through the Caribbean islands and interacts with Turks and Caicos, Haiti, Cuba, see if it brings any impacts here, if it tries to develop. And then our next tropical wave 
entering the Gulf of uh, the Caribbean and see if it develops in the same region as all of our other storms have been forming. Next name on the list would be Sarah. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on the Cyphering Weather. I'd like to give a shout out to Mia and Jay for donating to yesterday's channels, I mean video, so thank you very much. And if you would like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button, leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you're new and like detailed with the breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.